All right. Hi, everyone. Today we've got Paul Fioravanti. I can't even pronounce your last name. <laughs> Paul Fioravanti speaking. Um, he's from Alembic. He started working there on Monday. I believe they're an Elixir consultancy shop. Paul, correct me if I'm wrong. Today he's going to talk about how everything is reduced, particularly with uh, innumerables and reduce. I'll let him uh, continue his introduction. Yeah, cool. Bye. Thanks, Ryan. Um, so just before um, I start off with the presentation, I'd just like to say uh, thanks to Brenton, uh, who uh, was the person who asked me to come and do this uh, this presentation today. Um, he said that he had some uh, juniors that were uh, having the sort of attempting to use reduce, but were a little bit confused um, by sort of how to use it. Um, this was actually months ago now though, so I would wager that those problems have kind of been fixed by now. Uh, but you know, regardless, I'll sort of share what I've got with you here um, anyway. Um, also, uh, as an organizer of um, Roro Sydney, which is the Sydney Ruby meetup, I'd just like to thank Culture Amp for sponsorship of Ruby Australia, um, as it directly contributes to the success of, uh, of the meetups or of all of the events in the Ruby community. Um, so that's really awesome. And then also, you know, following on from that, my thanks go to Brian Big as the treasurer of Ruby Australia, making sure that I can actually pay Roro bills. Um, that's always nice. Um, and second, I'd just like to sort of give a, um, a quick shout out to um, whoever made the, the Culture Amp coding tests, because uh, uh, I got a hold of them and I did the front end one and the back end ones just for fun. Uh, and they were really good. I really, I really enjoyed them. So, um, so kudos for having them as part of your interview process and sort of having them thematically relevant, uh, you know, for the actual business and for them being lots of fun. Uh, so that's really appreciated. Um, well, I didn't do the interview process, so. But anyway, look, they're really good. That's what I wanted to say, but I'll just get onto the presentation, shall I? Okay, so cool. Um, so hi there, everyone. Uh, I'm Paul. I'm a principal consultant at uh, Alembic, newly muted. Uh, and this presentation is about a single little function in Elixir called reduce. And by reduce, I mean to change or transform something to a different form or to a more basic form, like when an orange is reduced to a pulp. So it was a solid that you could eat previously, uh, and, but now it's a liquid that you can drink. Uh, it's been transformed. And so up here, this is not real code, but uh, in Elixir, we could have a function like pulp, which takes in an orange and returns you an orange juice. Um, though it usually takes more than one orange to make a glass of orange juice. So we better give it a collection of oranges. And now someone could potentially use this pulp function as part of their nutritious breakfast routine. But under the hood, a reduce function would be doing the bulk of the work squeezing all of those oranges. And in Elixir, this is pretty much what happens uh, with uh, every function in the enum module when dealing with a set of enumerables like lists, which are kind of like arrays in other languages, in other programming languages, uh, or maps, which are kind of like hashes or dictionaries that you may find in other programming languages. Okay, so um, reducing. Let's take a look at some things here. So let's say that we take the uh, enum.sum function. And so here you're taking a list of three integers and reducing it to a single integer. And so on the surface, it's summing the numbers because that's what the function is telling you it's doing. But under the, under the surface there, it's reducing. Or well, how about enum.join, where you're taking a list of three strings and reducing them to a single string. So it's the same kind of thing. And so when we have these collections of data, we typically want to use them as a basis to perform some kind of operations or derive some information from them in order to create new pieces of information. And so let's take a bit of a journey down the reduced rabbit hole here to uh, some functions that iterate over collections that you may have seen in some other languages. Okay, so um, using our previous list, uh, what if we wanted to loop over it and print out what the current number is on each iteration? Well, conveniently, uh, we've got uh, the enum.each function uh, that can help us out with that. Uh, the each function takes a collection of enumerables as its first parameter and a function as its second parameter. 
And so in this case, it's a function that says to print out the current number using uh, io.puts. I'm sure you've all seen that if you've ever debugged any Elixir code. Uh, and so when we run this function that we've got uh, in each, it prints out the numbers and then returns the atom OK. And so OK is what the return value of io.puts is. Um, and in this case, it's the return value of the final time io.puts gets called. But why didn't it return three OK atoms or at least print them out so that we know that io.puts returned correctly? And if you already know the answer to that question, uh, that's really awesome. I'm sure many of you do. But if you don't, then keep that question in the back of your mind. And let's move on to another example. OK, so rather than just an OK atom, let's get Elixir to give us back a list of doubled values from the first list. And since we specifically want the return value to be another list, we can use the enum, enum .map function. And so like each, the map function takes a collection of enumerables as its first uh, a function as a function that determines uh, what value should go into the new list for each iteration of the enumerable collection in the first parameter. So here we can see that we're taking a number and then we're multiplying it by two and then we return two, four and six, a newly accumulated list of doubled numbers. So if you've done any programming at all, and I would wager that a significant amount of you would have, uh, each and map functions will probably be uh, very, very familiar to you um, as it's uh, an indispensable part, uh, I'm sure, of your uh, programming toolbox. I know I personally use them pretty much all the time. Okay, so let's go down one last leg of, uh, of the reduce rabbit hole. So let's, uh, let's change the values of our list to be, say, letters. And let's expand it a bit, and we'll make each letter appear multiple times in the list. Okay, and so from this list, I want to find out how many times each letter appears. So rather than a list, I want a map that will have the letters as its keys and the values as counts of how many times a letter appears in the list. So in this case, uh, A appears three times. B once and C twice. So what I need from this function, the function that I want overall, is for it to take in a list, I need it to return a map, and then the work that I need the function to, to uh, loop over each element in the list, I need it to add a letter key to the map if it doesn't exist to start the letter count, and if the letter key does exist in the map, then increment its value. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. Those are our requirements. Okay, so the enum.map function returns a list. So I can't use that. And enum.each's return value is the OK atom. So I also can't use that. So what are my options? If you guessed reduce, you are a very smart person and I'll give you a gold star. Okay, so let's take a look at what the reduce function here uh, is all about. So the first argument is um, no, you know, no surprises. It's the enumerable, which like each and map is our list. So let's put that in there. Then maybe extract it out into its own variable because it's a little bit long. Okay, so the next is this uh, ACK value here, which stands for accumulator, uh, though ACK is its common shorthand and you'll pretty much see it uh, everywhere in, uh, in the Elixir documentation. And so the accumulator is the value that will get returned every time the fun function in the next parameter runs. And it's here in this ACK parameter that we give the accumulator its initial value at this point where we're calling the function. So the enum.map function we used previously um, actually implicitly initialized an empty list and returned a populated list back to us. But here, what we want returned back is a map of those letter occurrences. So what will we be giving the accumulator parameter for its initial value? Uh, so in our case, we'll be giving it an empty map because we want to populate a map from scratch to generate our result. Um, if we had an existing map with figures that we wanted to add to, 
uh, we could put that in as the initial value instead. Um, we're certainly not limited to putting empty values in the ACK parameter, but for this purpose, we're starting afresh. And, uh, and then finally, we need to add in our fun or our function that will enable the transformation of our empty map into a populated map. Okay, so for here, for, so for every iteration of the list here, uh, this function that we have needs to take in a character from the list and then a map to populate. So you can see up there char and map as the two parameters to our functions. So on the first iteration of this list, the value of the map variable will be the empty map that we've just passed in. Okay, so for our purposes here, we'll get our function to call out to the map.update function to do all of the work of populating the map. And so map.update here, it looks this sort of the API there maybe looks a little bit cryptic if you've never seen it before. So just to elaborate briefly on it, um, map.update takes in a map and a as its first parameter, next a key, which in this case is the character from our list assigned here as char. Um, if map update can't find the character key uh, in the map, it will create it and then it will give it an initial value, which is the next parameter, one. And so if it does find the key though, uh, it will ignore that uh, initial parameter, that default parameter, uh, and but instead run the function in the next parameter, which takes the current value for that, for that key and then simply increments it by one. The run value from uh, map.update is a brand new map containing the updated values. And that new map takes the place of the map variable for the next iteration of the reduce function until we've gone through the whole list and then we get back the map that we expect. Okay, so great. That was probably a not so gentle introduction to enum.reduce, uh, a function that takes an enumerable input and gives you back some kind of transformed output. But the reason that I'm pushing reduce so hard uh, and that I've made this presentation completely focused around it is not because it's some kind of important computer science concept, but in Elixir, every function in the enum module can be expressed as and ultimately is a reduce function. So let's trace our way back out of the rabbit hole and, uh, and see if that is actually the case. So you remember that map function that returned uh, another list of, uh, of doubled values here? Well, it can also be written as reduce, where our starting accumulator value is a different empty list. And on each iteration of our list, we return a new list consisting of the doubled value and all of the other values that we've doubled so far. So what we actually get returned back here is the list backwards due to the nature of uh, adding elements to Elixir lists from the front, but we can fix this by piping the result into enum.reverse to get the result that we expect. So what we've done here is we've reduced data from one list into another list. So these two functions here are the same. Stepping back up the rabbit hole again, what about enum.each? It's the same concept here. Uh, but probably a little less straightforward. So let's take a slightly closer look here. So in this case, our initial value for reduce is nil because we don't specifically have a data structure to populate nor return for each iteration. We only want to print the current number and that's it. So what happens here is that the return value from io.puts is the okay atom, as we found out before, and that gets passed back into the accumulator on every iteration of the reduce function, um, but then it gets promptly ignored uh, every iteration until the very end when it's given as the final return value for the final iteration uh, of the list. And um, the, sort of the underscore on the ACK variable, you can see it just at the top right hand corner there. Um, that's Elixir's way of explicitly saying that this value is not used in a function. So we are completely ignoring the ACK in this case. But once again, um, here we have two functions here that are the same, emphasizing once again that every function in the enum module is syntactic sugar for some kind of reduce function. Um, if you don't believe me, 
go and check out the implementations for each and map and uh, any of the other functions in the Elixir Ina module itself. And uh, you will see that they all use the reduce function under the hood. And it's this reason that I think it's really useful to understand how to confidently use reduce to your advantage, uh, as it is the single most powerful function in Elixir's Ina module. And I think the concepts underlying it are portable to any other language you may use. Um, I know myself, I've taken many things uh, I've learned in Elixir back to my Ruby programming. Um, so look, next time you have an IX console open, uh, give Enam Reduce a try, and I'm sure that you'll have uh, all manner of data structures in your Elixir and Phoenix apps doing your bidding in no time. Thanks very much. Thank you, Paul. Brilliant. Um, one of the comments from the, the, Slack the Slack thread we have here is, wow, these slides are great. Oh my God. Hi, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, were there definitely. any questions? Thanks for the feedback. That's okay. Are there any questions from anyone on the Zoom here tonight, uh, today? I have a question. Oh. Here you go, Elliot. Okay. Um, so in your implementation of enum.map, Yep. You also used uh, enum.reverse. Uh, can you implement enum.reverse using reduce as well? Uh, yep, I'm pretty sure that uh, the enum.reverse, I can't remember uh, offhand, but uh, enum.reverse uh, is implemented uh, in the Elixir library as a reduce function uh, as well, uh, ultimately. Um, I probably have to go and find the find the documentation, but uh, but yeah, absolutely. Cool, thanks. Guys, did you have a question? No, I was just going to say that was a really great talk, really good explanation. Thank you. Oh, thanks very much. So everyone's now going to be using reduce instead of any other function in all their programs from now on. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Please don't. What's, what's your opinion on, like, obviously, in lots of circumstances, each or map would be more readable mm. and appear more simple. So would you still favor reduce in those circumstances or would you use the more readable? Uh, no, I definitely go for more code readability, uh, no doubt. So, so I, I absolutely do use uh, each map and all of the other, I guess, abstractions that the that the sort of enum API puts over reduce to make it read a lot nicer. Um, my general thoughts on this matter is that uh, code readability should come first, um, and then you know if you can if you can do the job using uh, all of the other methods that are non-reduce, then uh, then you know you might be better served. Uh, using them first, but then if you require, you know, some things like, um, you know, I need to take in, I need to transform a list into a map or, you know, some other structure into some other structure that none of the other, uh, you know, methods that Edum provides uh, can help you with, um, then you've got, you know, reduce there to, you know, to, it's, um, uh, you know, reduce has your back in that case. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thank you. No worries. Any other questions last minute? Cool. No. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for coming along today. No worries. So I've got, I've got all of these, uh, like the slide deck, if anyone wants to check out the slides, uh, then um, by all means, they can go and have a look at uh, my uh, GitHub uh, account. And it, they're all there. Uh, under presentations in case uh, you're interested. I've just put that into the chat. Uh, I put everything up there. Um, so feel free to uh, take, steal, deliver it to other people, uh, whatever you would like. Um, I use Dexset for my slide decks. Uh, so they're really good. That's sort of, it's the, you know, bootstrap equivalent for, uh, for markdown based slides and they're really good. You can highly recommend uh, checking them out. Um, but yeah, otherwise, thanks so much for having me.